Good morning. As Pastor Brandon likes to say, happy Sunday. Welcome to this online service, and thank you for joining us. We're glad that you're here. I'm Beth Crawford, Executive Director of Pastoral Ministries here at Clinton UMC, and I'm honored to be part of your worship this morning. Let's take a moment to center ourselves. Good morning. One of the terrific joys and the privileges and blessings we share together is, uh, is having this kind of time when we can come together as a praying community, praying up to the Lord, but also listening to the voice of God. So today I would like to begin by quoting Romans 8.28, which happens to be uh, one of the scriptures that I reflect on day to day to get myself uh, Christ-centered and spirit-led disciple of Christ. For we know that God causes all things to work together for good, for those who love him and those who are called according to his purpose. So together, we are gathered as God's people, God's children, to pray. Let us pray. Loving Lord, how good it is to be in your house of worship, even through this online service. We are deeply and powerfully connected with you and with each other. We are your children. The bond of love that you have given to us through the resurrection of Jesus is truly a remarkable outcome of your love. And it, that bond of love is not breakable. It is certainly sustainable because of your eternal love for us. Thank you, Lord, for the resurrection power that reminds us that we are your Easter people, people filled with your spirit filled with hope, and most of all, filled with love for you and for your creation and our neighbors. So in this spirit of joy, of being alive in your love, we just offer up unto you our voices, praise, and thanksgiving for who you are, for the ways that you touch our hearts and lives with your grace. Today, our Lord, we have to confess our human frailty our anxiety, our worry, even our fear. But we bring all these things to you and place them at the foot of the cross the, for the risen Christ. Help us, O oh Lord, to see your face shining upon us with the tremendous power of love because your message of love cannot be uh, pushed aside. Nothing can stop you from loving us, not even death. And in this spirit, O oh Lord, we are grateful. We shall reclaim victory in Jesus together. And with the smile on our faces, we'll walk through this time of uncertainty, navigating by the grace of your loving hands, and again, navigating through all this maze of life, not knowing exactly what's gonna happen and when. And yet, our faith says, if we have Jesus in our hearts, if we have the God of life and love guiding our path, our Good Shepherd, that is good enough. And we proclaim the simple but powerful faith in you and in your Son Jesus and the Spirit of Christ that leads us on. Oh Lord, give us the confidence and competence of your love and help us to live each day by following the footsteps of Jesus who calls us to come to the path of life, the path of love, and the path of care. So in this spirit, O oh Lord, we pray for one another. We lift up each other up with our love and care and good thoughts, and of course, the powerful in, as the prayers that we give to each other. So keep us well, O oh Lord, both in body and the spirit. Help us, O oh Lord, to stay focused on Jesus, when our bodies get weary and our hearts get tiresome, oh Lord, help us to draw strength from Jesus, no one else. Oh Lord, help us to walk with you through and through. All these things we pray with deep gratitude in the name of the one who rose from the dead and who is guiding us as our eternal Lord, that's Jesus. In his name, oh Lord, we now offer up unto you the humble prayer Jesus taught us to pray, all of us say, praying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Hi, my name is Greg Crawford, and I am the chairman of our missions team. It's nice to be with you this morning. I have some announcements for us. As a reminder, you can stay connected with us throughout the week through our first five devotionals, our Wednesday prayer time on Facebook Live at 7.30 a.m. and 7.30 p.m., and by contacting the church offices with any questions or needs that you might have. Also, we hope you're enjoying our online services. We invite you to support this ministry and all the ministries of the church with your financial gifts. You can give in whatever way is most convenient for you. You can mail your check to the office. You can add Clinton United Methodist Church to your online bill pay list or give through our app or website. Thanks for listening. Hello, I'm Faith, Director of Children's Ministry, and I'm in our children's wing where we usually do Sunday school. Today on our YouTube channel, I've posted a video where I talk about rainbows and show you how to make this rainbow craft. Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 37 to 40. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Lord, may the words that I share and the meditations on our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Do you remember Easter 2019? So I remember churches filled with music and people and crowds and lots of laughter and joy and Easter dinners with big family celebrations. How about Easter 2020? Not the same, right? We still got to worship, but it was online, maybe in our PJs, or was that just us? And we still got to maybe sing and maybe eat with a few people, but in places around the world, Easter dinner was a table for four or two or one. How was your Easter? Did it feel different? Did you feel a little unsettled? Do you have days when you're afraid or worried? I think it's okay to feel that way and to admit it because the truth is our world is broken. Did you know that nearly one in 10 people doesn't have enough food to eat? That there are more than a billion people who live in extreme poverty? Around the world, people are trafficked. People are killed for who they are. Families are separated. Our world is definitely broken. And yet, in the middle of all this, God calls us, even dares us, to love and trust him and to remember that God's love is unstoppable. So let's take a minute. I want to go back to a scripture before Easter. I know this is a weird time to use it. But let's look at when Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. So if you remember, Passover was a politically charged time, and Jesus is riding in, and the city was in turmoil. Let's read from Luke. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The stones would shout out. Now, some people say that this scripture means that the stones would shout praises of joy to God. And others say that the scripture means that the stones would witness to the oppression that was going on with the Jewish people. But I think that either way, Jesus is reminding us that God's love is unstoppable. A plan had been put in place and nothing was going to stop it. 
That day, Jesus knew he was near his earthly end. He knew that he was going to face some trials that you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. Betrayal, inquisition, torture, beatings, and slow death. But he kept loving his people anyway, and he kept going with the plan. And three days later, he celebrated his victory. Last Sunday, Pastor Brandon talked about Jesus' resurrection and how it takes us from death to new and eternal life. And I'd like to continue that thought this week. In fact, there's a great scripture that I love about it from Romans. Romans 8, 38 to 39 tells us, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. For me, there are three ways that I can think of that show us this, that nothing can separate us from God and from God's unstoppable love. So when you are having a trouble remembering what it's like to experience Easter joy, I encourage you to think of these three things as well. Scripture, creation, and the way that our people are responding. So for Scripture, we just read about Palm Sunday, and we talked about how Jesus said that nothing could stop God's perfect plan. The resurrection, of course, is the best story there is of God's unstoppable love. Let's take a look at the account from Luke. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, The women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Creation is one of my favorite ways of remembering God's unstoppable love. If you look around outside, you'll see what I mean. Even in the midst of our worry and on our, our uncertainty, the flowers are blooming, spring is coming, it's getting warmer. The birds are out there singing and they're chirping and they're making nests and they're laying eggs. And the sun is rising and setting every day and the moon and the stars are still giving us light. There's a song we sang last Sunday that talks about creation crying out with God's glory called So Will I. And part of the song goes like this. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. Creation is crying out God's glory. Can you hear it? So the third thing, people, people who serve as the hands and feet of Jesus. So that song, Hillsong Worship, tells us that if creation worships and obeys God, we can too. And in the midst of our broken world, I've seen several great examples of people being the hands and feet of Jesus. One of them, is Caitlin Apgar. Caitlin's one of our young adults. And one day recently, Caitlin got a phone call from Elaine Pete. Now, Elaine is on a team of people who are checking in to see if everybody in our congregation is okay. So Caitlin was really happy to get that phone call. And she and Elaine chatted. And Caitlin wanted to share some love too. So she asked Elaine, what can I do? Is there, are there some people I could write letters to? So Elaine gave her a list with a few people on it, and Caitlin started writing some letters. 
And before you know it, she had sent 15 letters and she was getting responses back. And the people told her how happy they were to hear from her. And they shared a little bit of their life. And one even sent a guardian angel necklace and said, I'm sending a guardian angel to watch over you. Then Jill Paleo reached out and she asked, can we start a team of letter writers? So now there's a whole team of people and a lot of people are getting a lot of letters. So what started out as a simple phone call to check in became Caitlin's letter writing effort, which became a whole letter writing campaign. God's love is unstoppable. When I asked Caitlin about it, she said to me, I just want to love on people. I want them to know that they're thought of. I want them to know that we're a community and that we care about each other. Isn't that great? And by the way, Caitlin also said that she's willing to write to other people. So contact the church office if you know somebody who could use a letter. And that's just one story. I've heard so many others. I've heard about nurses and occupational therapists and lots of people in the medical profession going to their jobs every day, even when they know they're going to be exposed to COVID. I've heard about people delivering soup and baking cookies. I've heard about people making and delivering masks. I've heard about people who are helping others who are financially struggling figure out how to pay the bills and put food on the table. God's love is unstoppable. By the way, if you read our first five devotionals this week, you'll get to hear several more people talk about what they're doing to spread God's love right now. One of them even said, we want to be able to look back on this time and say, we handled that really well. I just love that thought. So friends, remember the good news of Easter. Love takes some heavy hits, but love has already won. God's plan is perfect even when we can't understand it. And God's love is greater than all the sadness and sickness and sinfulness we collectively experience. So fight against the brokenness, but don't be fooled by it because God's love has already won. I know it might not look that way for some of you today, but look again with all the faith and the trust that you can muster. Love has already won. Can you feel it? Do you wanna be part of that force of love? Will you pray with me? Lord God, thank you for your unstoppable love. Help us to be part of your force of unstoppable love, we pray. In Jesus' powerful and holy name, amen.
Thanks again for worshiping with us today. I pray that you will see God's unstoppable love this week and that you will be a force for that love. As we wrap up our time together, I'd like to share with you a word of blessing from the book of Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And the children of God said, Amen. Have a great day, everybody.